Well, hello everyone and welcome to Signature Style Saturday. And yes, there are lots of signature touches that I have out here in my garden, but oh no, we are not going to spend any time out here because I just checked, it is 100 degrees. We have crossed the century mark. So Stuart, let's go inside and look at some pretty things. Well, what is a gardener to do when it's too hot to garden? Well, you do some interior gardening or some flower arranging at the very minimum. You know, I've often said one of the things about this channel is that I try to make things that are beautiful and stylish accessible. Well, I think by that, one of the things I mean by that is it doesn't ha you don't have to have deep pockets. Sometimes we can create really stylish things with practically nothing. And this is a case in point. So I'm gonna show you some flower arrangements that cost very, very little. And in some cases, you could even replicate them without spending any money at all. So I've got this gorgeous arrangement as is one of my signature style. My signature style touches inside is that I always have some kind of massive flower arrangement on the corner of this island. It was when I bought the house, one of the first things that I, I saw when I looked at the house was that's what I would do. And indeed, I have carried that tradition out. Yes. So for this week, I have something that is the epitome of summer, I think, and that is sunflower, sunflowers, and yes, weeds. <laughs> So I saw these weeds growing up in the alley behind the garage and I thought they were just beautiful. I love the way they kind of wave. I like the fact that they are reminiscent of wheat, which is reminiscent of Oklahoma and our roots. You could probably tell me what weed from which they hearken, but <laughs> I just, I just loved them. So I also bought a bouquet or two bouquets, I guess, of sunflowers from, let's all say it together, Trader, Trader Joe's. Joe's. And they were not expensive at all. But I want to point out that even if you didn't want to spend any money on sunflowers, I could have done nothing but just had these gorgeous seed heads in this thrifted vase, which I think cost me $3.99. And I think that would have been beautiful in its simplistic elegance. I could have also gone roadside and just clipped some sunflowers from a field. They're everywhere right now. And if it's not in anybody's backyard, and if it's just in a public space, then I say go for it. So you could clip <laughs> some sunflowers um, from the roadside. You could clip any kind of sunflower or one color bloom from your own garden and I think it would be beautiful including from some of your flowering shrubs right now. So there's not a lot that's flowering in the summertime, but probably you might have some crepe myrtles. It would be fun to use nothing but crepe myrtle seed heads in here with these weeds. <laughs> I, I feel funny even saying that because I think they're so pretty. Um, so just let your imagination go crazy. Just come up with something to companion with these weedy seed heads. Now something else that's giving me great, great joy, it's a simple pleasure, simple elegance, is Leah has been helping me get organized and she's been brilliant at it. And I told her that, <laughs> that one of my dreams was to be like Miranda in The Devil Wears Prada, the, the <laughs> character uh, that Meryl Streep played, and she would get the book. She would get the book on, Leah, was it on Sundays or? I, I think so, she would get the book. So I told Leah, I said, I want a book to keep me organized. And so she found this one that harmonized with my own book and soon to be with my garden journal. She put it together put it together for me. And it's, we are just now starting it, so there isn't a lot in here. But she's got some of these kind of plastic pages and in it she has what I've got upcoming for the week, appointments, talks, videos, along with talking points. 
ideas that we have. I give her tear sheets to put in here. She incorporates those. And over time, Leah, I'm sure this will get to be quite fat and quite massive and probably develop a patina. <laughs> <laughs> a patina. But it's it's just one of those little things that's given me tremendous pleasure. And since I guess I'm not responsible enough to keep my own calendar because I sometimes miss appointments, then this will be a helper, as will Leah. So let's move on to another portion of the house where we have another flower arrangement that I've just kind of dubbed Cheap Chic. Stuart, what do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, today from my reading nook, I have two reads for you. Make sure in the comments below to let me know what you are reading, whether it's serious, whether it's summer light reading, it can be fiction, nonfiction. Put your information in the comment section below because we are starting to put together a recommended a follower recommended reading list that we will post. So this week on my radar, on my literary radar screen, are two different books. Kind of heavier is the number one New York Times bestseller, Atul Gawande, Being Mortal. I was talking with my younger sister about this yesterday. She asked me what I was reading. We always kind of share books, and she had already read it, and she said it's wonderful. She's a doctor, so I think it was particularly meaningful meaningful to her. So I highly recommend it. The other book I wouldn't necessarily say is light nor heavy reading. I already had this book, but so many of you recommended it to me that it uh, kind of just reminded me that I should take it off of my bookshelf and get started. And I'm really just reading passages. I'm not reading it all the way through. And that is Uprooted, A Gardener Reflects on Beginning Again by Paige Dickey. I will put links to both of these books below, but that is what is on my bedside table for reading this week. Well, Stuart Leah and I were just laughing because I am a girl who loves to forage. <laughs> And I'll go out and I'll walk around in the fall or now even in the summer, my pockets will just be stuffed with all sorts of nature's gifts, things that I just think are inherently beautiful and would look great on my mantle and they cost me nothing other than observation. So look at these sweet little, I believe they're seckle pears or they came off of a pear tree. I went to get um, a facial the other day and in the parking lot, there was a pear tree with just tons of these little pears that were lying in the grass. A lot of them had been smushed in the parking lot by cars. They were being unloved and I decided that I thought they were just wonderful because especially around Christmas, really any time of year, I'm just infatuated with natural uh, fruit, especially when it's still on the branches, but also miniature fruit. So I thought these were adorable and I thought they had such personality and such character. And Stuart, look at how, what wonderful shadows they make. They're very picturesque. They're very picturesque, yes. It looks, it looks like a, well, it's a still life. It is a still life. And I love the way they look. I love the fact that some of them are kind of this oh, maroonish color, kind of a mahogany color and green. But mostly I just love the dear little stems on them. I think they are so sweet and they just make me smile. Especially when I put them in this thrifted McCoy vase you guys, I think, have commented on it in the past. It was thrifted, but it was a thrifted gift. It was a gift from someone who loves to do thrifting, and she gifted it to me many, many years ago. And then these limey green hydrangeas, these are all, well, I take that back. Half of them are <laughs> from the Annabelle hydrangea that's in my backyard, and you can see that they're starting to get kind of papery so they should dry beautifully. And then two, maybe three of them 
are these lime green starting to age terra hydrangeas and once they do age even further they will dry into that beautiful russet brown color that you see um, in the arrangement that I used to have here that is now living in the great room. So I think this whole still life is really, really beautiful. A great signature touch of mine using forged vines. And then of course, accentuated by the fact that I love taper candlelight. And so just for you, it's the middle of the afternoon, but just for you, I lit these tapers on my mantle. The other thing is, and I was talking with Leah about this, when you live in a small house in a small space, she just moved to a new apartment. I think decor wise, whether it's your mantle, whether it's your floors, whether it's a sideboard, your dresser, I think it's important to really mix up the still lives and other things that you have out to show the world because because it's just fun and because you don't want to get bored in your small space and because it's an exercise in creativity. So I would encourage you, I am not one to decorate someplace and leave it there in a static state for a long period of time. No. I am a seasonally <laughs> dynamic kind of gal, and I think that's one of my signature touches. So Stuart, with my new candle, I call it a snifter because my mom used to call it a snifter, but I think that's actually a brandy snifter. And this is a candle a snuffer? snuffer, snuffer. Somebody out there told me that. These are the tidbits that I love to get from you guys. Okay, Stuart, let's take a break here and move <laughs> on to another location and another cheap, chic flower arrangement. Right, let's do it. Well, here is a third cheap, chic flower arrangement. This one is in my parlor rooms uh, right in front of the windows on this little table that I love to meet and greet people at. These are some hydrangeas that came from my garden and I think they are very pretty and garden fresh, but of course you could buy some at Trader Joe's or your local <laughs> florist or wherever you buy your flower, uh, your flower necessities. And here I have just paired them with some leaves from Dusty Miller. I think I may have talked in the last, uh, the, was it the last video about pinching back your oh, Dusty Miller, recently, yes, yes and how I sometimes like to cut off or take off some of the larger leaves to use in flower arrangements. And this is a perfect example of that. So this would look equally as good with just one hydrangea if you have to purchase them. You wouldn't even have to buy three, but I think it looks beautiful in this Tulip Pierre that belonged okay, to you're gonna have to say that a again. Tulip Pierre, and I could be just butchering that you're pronunciation. Usually not, you're usually pretty, pretty but good. this is it's really a vase that is supposed to be dedicated to tulips, but in this case I think it looks absolutely brilliant with hydrangeas and dusty miller leaves. I dusty don't know that I've ever foliage. seen anything like this before. So it's very fun. You can see it's got one, two, three, four, five different compartments. And then because I just found a couple of sweet little things on my last walkabout in the walking life, here is just a little magnolia pod. I love the texture of that. And mostly I love this part right here. It's got this wonderful- That is straight uh, off of it? That's not- Yeah, it's just, isn't it so fun? It looks fun? so made. It, I know, it does. It looks so furry and it just looks sweet. And, and I like it. And I have often in the winter time spray painted those and even used them as uh, Christmas tree decorations. So what I are think the things we used to pretty. pick up out of the old backyard that used to always get tons of? Little pine cones? Uh, pine or, cones, all sorts of things. Well, those, 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 oh, there was some yeah, specific you got all uh, the time. I, I did. I, I, I got, well, I'm just, I'm just a foraging creature. You do it so a lot. anything that I find outside, I like to forage. And then I just love this little distorted branch because I just loved it. It reminded me of a branch of an olive tree and I thought it was interesting. And then I like sometimes to just tell a sweet little story. Uh-oh. With something else. You see, you can tell that I'm kind of infatuated by stems and the line of the stems. So I've got one more cheap chic thing that I want to show you that is actually not flower related, but I think it's a wonderful idea. I just discovered it this week and I love it. So let's go back to the kitchen. 
Well, what have I learned this week? Well, I learned that air conditioning is absolutely mandatory when it's 100 degrees outside. Is that right, Stuart? Correct. Yes, Stuart is currently living without air conditioning, but he has hope for tomorrow. <laughs> he has hope for cooler, a cooler climate UAC, tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be yes, way cooler. yes, and you'll be way poorer. <laughs> uh, but what I learned this week is the importance of taking your time to figure something out. Several years ago, you know, every year I have a word for that year. And several years ago, it was figure outable, which was a really hot topic by a woman named Marie Forneo. I'm gonna double check. Marie Forleo. Um, she had a book out called Everything is Figure Outable. And basically that was the premise of the book. And I was pretty good about it, I guess, during that year. But mostly I have realized recently is that sometimes I can't figure things out because I simply don't have the patience and don't take the time to figure them out. Whether that is how something works or how the parking meter works downtown <laughs> or a new piece of equipment I have or why, why something just isn't, isn't working as advertised. And usually it's operator error. And it's because I have some kind, I'm under some kind of delusion that I'm so important that I'm always in a rush. And that's not necessarily true. If I would just take a deep breath, take the time to figure it out, move something out of the way instead of trying to just you know, kind of power through something, if I will just think it through, take my time, work methodically, then typically the experience is far less frustrating. I have a little sense of immediate gratification when I have indeed figured something out. My frustration level is lower and I'm just being a little bit more focused, which I guess is part of that whole mindfulness thing about, yeah, just being in, being in the moment. Don't be thinking about your garden when you are trying to figure out how to screw something on or unscrew it or something as simple as that. So I think that's what I learned this week is the importance of slowing down taking my time, paying close attention, deconstructing something, and then hopefully whatever my problem is, it too will be figure outable. Now, one thing I always love to look for when I go to the thrifting store is just really large, massive glass containers, either to use them as vases or in this case, to use them as lanterns. Now these actually were, they're just little footed containers. I think I, sh glass containers, last week I had them styled overflowing with berries and some cuttings from my Take the Cake uh, berry, blueberry bush out front. But today I'm styling them a little different because I found something I'm so excited about. I love very, very, you know, I'm crazy about taper candles. And I love very simple taper candle holders. I had to say that slowly because it's a well, mouthful. Well <laughs> and I found these online. I got them both in brass and in black because they immediately transform any glass vessel into, I think, a really expensive looking candle holder. They look heavy. You know, huh? Are they heavy? They look heavy. No, they're not heavy at all. The, the brass in your hand? Is no, these are not heavy at all. Cool. And you could use them very s simply like this with a taper candle. Now in this instance, I would probably use one of those glass bobeches that, that catch, catches the wax. Um, and I probably should put them some of them in here also because these are not dripless candles. But I think they're just really classy looking, they're brass, and they just add a little bit of illumination to the table. But just think, you could get a great big glass jar that had pickles in it, or that had okra in it, or something, you know, one of those institutional size containers that you could probably find at a restaurant supplier, at a thrift store, just really massive containers that are glass, and put one 
one of these in there, maybe put like a 12 inch or a 16 inch tall candle. And I think that would be absolutely brilliant and cost practically nothing because I, these are sold in quantities and I can't remember, it was like maybe six for $14 or something like that. But wouldn't that be a great gift? to find a cheap, chic glass vessel and put one of these in there with a taper candle, wrap it up all beautifully, and I think it would make a great housewarming gift. Um, really, just anything. Christmas gift, put some greenery in there. I just think it's a really fun, inexpensive idea. And then I also saw, because sometimes when you buy one thing in a certain finish, I notice they'll mm -hmm. recommend something like oh, yeah. in that same finish. And I actually did need a salt and pepper set for my new table, my lit fad table. And I got these and these were also very inexpensive. And I just like, again, I like the elegant simplicity of them. And I like the fact that they echo the candle holder, the taper candle holder that is in my glass footed containers. So there you go. There's another cheap, chic, trick for you that you might want to try out. And then I've got a, another fun thing, a, kind of a fun project that I'm working on and I want to share that with you too. So as a grand finale, I'll show you a project that is in the works. Okay, this is such a fun project, but it's also so going to date me. <laughs> So I was talking with Leah the other day about my just overabundance of tear sheets, things that I tear out of magazines, ideas that I have, um, things that I copy, just blah, blah, blah. I just have way too many tear sheets. And some of you were asking me how I wrangled them. Now it's dating me because the younger generation, they put all of their stuff probably on, on Pinterest, Leah, is that what you told me? On Pinterest, Digital, right? yeah. yeah, Pinterest, or you know, you can save it, archive it on Instagram, and I do that too. But I find that very infrequently do I go back and look at them. Um, whereas if I, if I have a, a tear sheet, I can put it up on my bulletin board. I can take it with me to the florist or the craft store and I can get exactly what I need. And it's not just a tiny little bit of square that I need my reading glasses to be able to interpret. So I found this this week and it has transformed my life. It has been so much fun. I put on old episodes of Mad Men or just whatever and an old movie, and I have been categorizing my tear sheets. Now, heretofore, a lot of these, I'm not even going to pretend that they were organized. They were just in <laughs> stacks waiting for me to do something with them. Uh, some of them actually were in a small filing cabinet that I have in a closet in my office. But that was not that accessible. I wanted something that I could put on a tabletop that I could easily move from one location to another, but that was good looking and also in one of my kind of signature uh, touches that is highly textured. I love seagrass, I love anything that's woven, and voila! I found this filing cabinet. I like the way it's got kind of a, a pleather, pleather appointments on it. I didn't believe it was a filing and cabinet. And he didn't believe it was a filing it. cabinet. Because see, look, it's got, it's, very it's just Linda. very, very portable. It's, very it's got these hand holders, but I just love it. And then you can put hanging files in here. So I'm in the process of having my different categories. Like I've got one for uh, flowers, for picnic, Christmas, fall, bar, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving, projects, topiary, all of those kinds of things. And then I also have something that um, is just, I've got files that are just divided by month. So I've got January through February. If I come through one of my main category uh, files, let's say flowers, and I see something that I want to use as a floral arrangement for next week or next month or whatever, then I just pull it out. And I either put it in my notebook that Leah so kindly uh, came up with for me, or I put it under the appropriate month. Sometimes I will put it into that monthly folder and I won't execute on that idea for years. 
but it becomes that that image becomes like an old friend to me. <laughs> and eventually I will express its beauty in one way or another at one holiday or another. Again, it's just one of those things that's just kind of fun. It was actually a tear sheet that gave me the inspiration to use those beautiful weeds that were outside in my alley. And it's fun then as I am filing all of these to go through my stacks and stacks of just tear sheet ideas and file them away because then I get to revisit my some of my very, very favorite images. There, there I have no fresh ideas, you guys. All of my ideas are stolen or inspired or I've used something else as my, as my muse. And the difference is I'm just trying to be attentive to it that, oh, I not only want to tear this out because it's a beautiful image, but I actually want to execute. And I actually want to make one of these gorgeous tableaus. I want to make them manifest. So this just might go up on my Christmas in July bulletin board in my office and hopefully I can use a lot of cheap chic appointments <laughs> and thrifted items to bring some of these tableaus to life. I hope you guys enjoyed some of these interior decorating ideas, storage ideas, cheap chic of things that we can do when it is just too brutal to be outside, too hot, too sweaty, too humid to be gardening. So there you go. Go out and do something fun and express your signature style on this signature style Saturday. Now, this is an epilogue. I should have told you this and I didn't. And I, I, I just really feel that I would be negligent if I not tell, if I did not tell you that while I am using this tabletop because I don't want to have to bend over to get into it, it actually comes with some wheels. It actually comes with some um, rolling file cabinet casters that you can put on the bottom of it. So if you want to roll it from underneath a sideboard or roll it underneath maybe even your bed and hide it away or you just want in any way to make it a little bit more mobile you can put these wheels on it so i i i felt like i wasn't giving you the <laughs> full story so there's my little epilogue on this seagrass filing cabinet <laughs>